Today let's install a web server on Linux. And no, I'm not talking about a simple install Nginx with unencrypted HTTP traffic. No, no, no. I'm talking about a fully functional containerized web server with a database server, trusted HTTPS certificates that are auto-renewed and that in 15 minutes. <laughs> let's go. Hi everybody, my name is Christian and I always make great tutorials and content for IT professionals. I also stream every Wednesday, Thursday and sometimes Monday on Twitch, so if you have any questions, don't miss that. In this video we will set up a web server. And setting up a web server can be complicated because a web server contains many different components. Like you want to have a database server, you want to have an intrusion prevention like fail to ban, you want to have trusted HTTPS certificates and so forth. And in this video I will use a simple approach because I've searched for a solution that can be easily deployed in just a few minutes but still has all the necessary components, has trusted HTTPS certificates and so on. And that's why we are using using a containerized approach with Docker and Docker Compose. So that can be simply installed. Note if you're not familiar with Docker already, you should check out my other two videos about Docker and Docker Compose. There I will teach you all the fundamentals about containerizing, how it works and how you can easily install Docker and Docker Compose on your Linux server. So don't forget to check out these videos before watching this, otherwise it can be a bit tricky because one thing we need to do before starting with the installation of our web server, you need to have a Linux server running that can be any Linux distribution that supports Docker. You need to have Docker and Docker Compose installed and also have a public domain that will point to the IP address of your web server and your web server needs to be accessible from the public internet on port 443 and port 80. So don't forget to check all these prerequisites before starting the installation. So check out my videos if you want to know how to install Docker or you simply can just refer to the official Docker documentation. There are just a few commands you need to execute. I've put you a link in the description below. But you could also use a cloud provider like DigitalOcean because they have a droplet in their marketplace where you can easily deploy an Ubuntu server that already has Docker and Docker Compose pre-installed and that will be just created in a few minutes. Note this is not a sponsored video by DigitalOcean in any way, but you will find a referral link in the description below. If you use that link to sign up, you will get $100 free credits for 60 days. You know the deal. Okay, so if you have installed your Linux server and you have installed Docker and Docker Compose on your server, we can start configuring our web server. So we will start with creating a configuration file that is called the Docker Compose file. And this is used to configure all our services that are used for the web server stack. And I'm using an image from linuxservers.io. So I have already used some images in my WireGuard tutorials. They are some enthusiasts who managed container images for the community and they have some awesome stuff on their homepage. And I found an interesting image that is called Swag. So this contains an Nginx image with fail to ban. It also automatically obtains trusted HTTPS certificates and it can also run a database server and it can also act as a reverse proxy, which is also pretty amazing amazing. But in this video we will mainly focus just on the web server configuration with a database server. So if you check out their GitHub homepage, you can find an amazing documentation. There are many different examples with different approaches. And you also have this weird swag dude up here. <laughs> so they just got me when I've seen this. This is just amazing. And here you can find some interesting examples for Docker Compose configuration files, but we will use a very simple approach with installing a simple web server with a database server and use that to deploy a WordPress homepage. So let's start and don't waste any time because the timer started now. Okay, so I have installed a new server droplet on my DigitalOcean cloud with Ubuntu and automatically Docker and Docker Compose installed. So first let's check if Docker was installed correctly and also Docker Compose is there. So with these two commands you can check if Docker and Docker Compose are running correctly. If you see the version numbers everything is fine. I also will add a new user because I don't want to do everything with the root user. So I will add a new user Christian. I will automatically create a personal home folder with a dash m parameter. Add a comment, so this is an administrative user. And I will add this user to the two groups, docker and sudo. And I will also change the default shell to bin bash. So now I will create a new folder in the home Christian. 
that is called .ssh and add the public key to the authorized key files there. By the way, if you are not familiar with private and public key authentication on Linux servers, you should check out my video about this. I've put your link in the description below. Okay, so let's check if we can log in with the user now. So let's exit here. I also forgot to set up a password for this user. And let's check if we can now log in with the user Christian. So now I will check if I need to do any updates on this server. And do some updates. By the way, if you don't want to remember all the commands I'm using, you can also have a look at the link to my written blog article. There you can copy and paste all the commands I'm using in this tutorial, so you don't need to write down this or remember this. Okay, so the server is now updated and ready to be installed with the web server. So I will create a new folder in the opt folder that is called web server swag. And I will also change the owner of this folder to my administrative Linux user. Now I need to check which user and group ID my user has and that will be important later. So execute the ID and copy this user ID and the group ID. So now we can add our Docker Compose static files and I have prepared two test files that I will show you in this video. So let's go to my project folder. This is in the research folder, web server stack. And there you can see there are two files, the simple and the complete YAML. So we will start with a simple Docker Compose configuration file and I will open this in Visual Studio Code. So we will first start with the version number two services and we add a new service with the name swag. And that will use the image from Linux server IO that is called the swag image and we simply set the container name also to swag. Now we need to add this parameter here and you can look this up in the official Docker documentation. So this will allow the Docker container to access the network stack on the host operating system. Then we will need to add some environment variables and the PUID and the PGroup ID should be the user and the group ID of your administrative Linux user. So note that the Docker container will set the permissions to this user ID. So Remember, I don't have the user ID 1000, I have the user and the group ID 1001, so I need to change that. Now we need to add the time zone, so I've added this to Berlin, which is the time zone in Germany. And then we will need to add the URL of our website. So the URL in my case is do-test-1.thedigitallife.com. And I have set this on my DNS server to point to the public IP address of my DigitalOcean web server. And I will also add a subdomain. So you can add different subdomains. In my case, I will add the three W's. So this is very common and I will use this as my main domain for my website there. Then we have the validation method. So this should be HTTP by default. So this is for the Let's Encrypt HTTPS certificates. And if you want to use a wildcard certificate, you would need to change that a bit. So you probably will need to look up the documentation of Linux Server IO. But for one subdomain or one domain, this is totally fine to choose the HTTP. Then we need to add a volume and the volume need to point to a folder on your host operating system. So don't change the last part, but the first part you can choose whatever you like to store the configuration on your host operating system. Then we will need to forward the ports 443 and 80 to the Docker container. So this is important, otherwise the Docker container is not able to accept any network connections from the public internet. And we will also set the restart to unless stopped. So that means whenever you restart your host operating server, the Docker container will also be started if it was started before. If it was stopped, it won't start the container automatically. So I will now copy this file here to my Linux server. So I will just use the scp command. I've showed you this in my SSH private and public key remote login video also. So I will use the simple.yaml file and simply copy this to christian at and then the public IP address of my server or I will just use the DNS name that points to the public IP address there, the digitallife.com. And I will place this in the opt web server swag folder and call this docker compose.yaml. Let's go back to our web server here and see if the file is there. So I will cd into this folder here and do an ls command and there you can see here is our docker compose file. Let's check if everything is working fine. 
and you can see I can also open this on the server here. Let's quit. So let's just try to start this and let's see if this deploys us a simple website. Let's execute docker compose up and I also will add the dash d parameter to run this in the background. So let's hit enter. And you can see it didn't pull down the Linux server swag image before, so that's currently downloading the image. And then it will simply start the Docker container that will run the web server stack inside. So you can also check with the docker compose ps command if this is running correctly. And you can see the swag container is now up and running. It has two ports forwarded, the 443 and port 80. Let's see if we can do a test connection to this website. So that's absolutely amazing. You can also see the Docker image has obtained trusted HTTPS certificates, so you can inspect this. So that's perfect. And we can now simply just start to configure and deploy our website here. So let's go back to our web server. I will show you what the Linux server image has done. So let's execute an ls command and you can see there's a new folder here, that's a config folder. If we cd into this config folder and execute an ls, you can see there are many different configuration folders and files. And if you want to configure your Nginx web server within this Docker container, you can simply just go to this folder here and see the different configuration files like the site configs, the nginx.conf and you can have a look at this. We can also go back and check the PHP configuration and check the PHP local ini. Yeah, you can add the PHP ini file and overrides any settings there. And if you want to put a website on your server, just go to the free w's folder here, execute an ls command and there you can see here is our index.html test file that will just present us this test here. But you can just remove this and place a website in here. So this is the next thing we want to do because I want to deploy a simple WordPress homepage on this server. But before we do that, we will need something else because we will need a database here. So I will also show you how to add a database to this server. So I have created a new file, this is called complete.yaml and I will add an example from the Linux server IO documentation. We will use the image from Linux server IO, set the container name to MariaDB and then we will also need to change our user and group ID or adjust this according to what user you are using on your web server. And then we have the different MySQL configurations. So we will start with the MySQL root password, then we have the time zone and also the MySQL database, the user and the password. And then we also have the volume, so we have the opt web server swag config and I will add a new folder that is called MariaDB where I will store my MySQL database configuration files and route this to the config folder inside the Docker container and I will also add the restart unless stopped image there. Note it's also recommended to add something at the end of the swag container here, so when we're doing this here. We also should add a depends on and then the name of our service here that is called MariaDB. So that means whenever the swag is trying to start it will check first if the other container is running and otherwise it won't start this container. Okay, so I also needed to change the user and group ID here, I forgot to do that. And now we have created our docker compose file. So let's also copy this to the server and we simply just overwrite the old docker compose file. First let's stop the container here, so we execute docker compose down, so this will delete our container. And then we simply copy the complete YAML file. Let's switch back to our web server. Let's go back to the root folder and inspect the docker compose file and there you can see we have added our MariaDB static configuration here. So let's just try to start this container. Just simply execute up and the dash d parameter. So this should also pull the new image for the MariaDB from Linux server IO and then try to start this container before starting the swag container. And we will check with docker compose ps if both containers are running correctly. Now I want to deploy a WordPress block on this website. So to do that we will just simply go to this folder here, so the config folder and then the three w's and we will download the WordPress block image and extract this here in this folder. You should definitely check out the Linux server I.O. documentation. There you will find a lot of great examples like how to use this as a reverse proxy and how to host a WordPress site. So we'll just use this and I've basically just used this as my example here. And now we will need to download the WordPress block 
and will add this to the folder. Now I will need to change those three commands before I will execute them, so I will show you a simple trick to do that. Just hit Ctrl X E and this will automatically start a nano editor and you can just uh, place your commands in here, modify them before executing them. So first command will download the WordPress latest uh, tarball and then we will extract this in the folder but we will need to change this as this is not the correct folder. So I have placed the configuration in the opt folder web, web server swag config and then the 3w folder. Okay, then we can delete this. So let's exit this. And you can see our commands are now executed. So if we do an ls command you can see there is a new WordPress folder. But the problem here is that our root folder points to the w folder and we need to change this to the WordPress folder. So let's go back to our configuration and go to the nginx configuration. And let's go to site confs and edit the default file. So this is a static configuration file and you can see Linux Server IO has added some great examples how to set up a web server. So they have made a redirection from port 80 to port 443. They have added HTTP2 and added some good recommended configuration settings. So of course you can customize anything in here. So this is just a great example you can easily customize. But I'm looking for one specific config and this is the root folder here. So we will need to change this here from the config 3w folder to and add the WordPress folder here. Okay, let's write and exit this file and now we will need to restart the docker containers. To do that simply just execute docker compose up d and then force recreate. Okay, let's go back to our website and let's see if the WordPress page is loading. Let's reload this. And you can see we now can set up a WordPress block here. So if we go through the menu, you can uh, adjust the database. So if you want to do that, we will need to use the same configurations as we use here. Don't use the root password, you need to use this password here. And then you need to change the database host because this is not the local host in this case because we are running this in a different container. So the swag container needs to connect to the MariaDB service. And we simply can just use the name as uh, the host name because Docker takes care of those redirections and network host names. So let's submit this and we can simply just run the installation. So this is just a simple example how you could set up a simple website or you can do whatever you like with it. And you should have your web server now up and running. So I hope this didn't take too long than expected. But I don't want to rush through these tutorials without any detailed explanation because otherwise I think it doesn't help anybody. So you should really understand the underlying concept and note we have just scratched the surface. You can use these docker images and these custom configuration files to do whatever you want. You can add some customizations to these static configuration files in the config folder. You can do some adjustments. You could also use this in a reverse proxy setup. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this was helpful to you. Please don't forget to hit the like button and leave me a comment if you are interested in more videos and tutorials about this stuff. And if you are interested in content for IT professionals in general, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. A quick reminder, I always stream every Wednesday, Thursday and sometimes Monday. So if you have any questions and you can also come to my Discord community if you want to get in touch with people who share the same interests like you. So before I go, I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon, especially Mason, who is the producer of this show. So without you, the community, this whole project wouldn't be possible at all. So thanks everybody for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care of yourself and I see you soon.